Today on 21st Century Television. Explore state-of-the-art technology, innovative business strategies, insights from cutting-edge corporations around the globe, a visionary look into the answers of tomorrow today. Business leaders, business solutions, 21st Century Television. Welcome to 21st Century Business, I'm Jackie Bales. When planning new facility construction projects, many developers focus exclusively on reducing the initial construction costs. The problem with this is that these costs account for only about 20% of the total cost of ownership. The managing director and owner of Alpha Facility Solutions, John Garcia, is joining us today to discuss the critical topic of facility asset management and what businesses can do to truly save money. Welcome, John. Thank you, Jackie. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. John, what are the biggest challenges facing facility owners? Prioritizing scarce resources. Hmm. It's, uh, it's that simple, but it's also that difficult. That difficult. Tell us a little bit about Alpha Facility Solutions and, and how you help them make those priorities. We take a complete look at their facility portfolio. You mentioned 20% is the initial design and construction cost. Mm -hmm. Well, another 80% is what the client incurs over the full life cycle of the facilities. So our team of architects, engineers, construction managers, environmental scientists, information management specialists, and business professionals focus on the assets over the full life cycle of a client to help them understand how they can adjust their scarce resources and prioritize them and have measurable outcomes. Hmm. Sounds like very valuable information. Let's watch as Alpha Facility Solutions shows us how they help organizations save money and plan for the future of their facilities in this 21st Century Business Field Report. While cost-saving measures at the beginning of a project are appealing, they often do not take into account the remaining 80% it will cost to operate a facility. Alpha Facility Solutions team of professionals use their expertise in a variety of areas to optimize performance of facility assets for their full life cycle and significantly reduce the total cost of ownership. What sets us apart from others is that we're a focused, stable, innovative company. And we come to work each day with the intent of dedicating our careers and our, each of our expertise to the field of facility asset management. We believe that it's a privilege and an honor to be invited to become a part of our client's extended resource base. We're a trusted advisor and we take that seriously and we listen. We know that every client has a good asset management program in place. When they come to us, they're just looking to take it to the next level. And so to do that, we become system integrators. And being a system integrator means that we're taking their existing processes and enhancing them. And if they are looking to us for ideas on new technologies, we can do that. We have in-house IT programming staff, and then we can blend the best of all their current capabilities and take them to the next level they're seeking to achieve their goals. From my perspective, when you are making these strategic investments, you need to know where to target your dollars for the facilities of greatest need. You need to know when to renovate, when to replace, and equally as important, you need to know what the financial requirements are for your newest of buildings, the buildings that have been recently commissioned or maybe just a few years in age. John, define facility asset management and tell us how that has evolved into this current field of professional focus. Sure, Jackie. Facility asset management uh, may be best uh, understood from a historical perspective. Uh, architects and engineers have been around since the, you know, people started stacking stuff together to create houses and places to work and learn and live. Uh, the construction profession has been right along with those two professions. Construction management came along about 25, 30 years ago to be fiduciary responsible to the owner's interest to get architects and engineers and general contractors to play nice together. <laughs> and then the operations facility management folks were given the keys to the facilities to operate them and maintain them over the, the full life of the facility. Facility asset management steps in, which marries up all of those professions uh, to focus on the complete life cycle, where the facility manager does their best to keep one facility or small group of facilities operating efficiently and effectively, and the engineers and the architects and constructors did their best in that initial 20% of the life cycle cost to, to build a quality facility. We come at it from how do you best manage 
those facilities to achieve the best return on investment or minimize the risk to shut down or, or failures over that 80% cost. Hmm. Why did you decide to start Alpha? And what do you think sets Alpha apart from others in the industry? Well, it was listening to clients. Hmm. Background is in from the architecture and engineering and construction profession. Uh, consulting is number one rule is listen to the client. So listening to the client over those years and having had some practice in former lives before Alpha of doing facility assessment work and helping with some planning, understood that the clients were, were looking for more, more in terms of how do they measure their performance, mm -hmm. how do they set goals, both financially and operationally, and set those design criteria such that they're helping themselves not just to get a good product short term, but it's contributing to an overall goal of uh, long term performance. Hmm. That, that sounds really smart to be able to put all that together and think about that at the beginning. Unlike their larger, more bureaucratic counterparts, Alpha is a certified small business and therefore able to provide innovative, responsive and flexible solution based services for their clients. Since Alpha is solely focused on providing a thorough analysis of how building owners and operators can better plan for their facilities, their assessment results are not biased by future design or build work. The value that I contribute to our clients on a very small personal basis is I know that I establish a connection with our clients. I offer them a person and a face to call at any hour of the day, to email, to correspond, to put them in touch with other experts here at Alpha. And then on the very broad scheme, I know Alpha, because I do believe we are all part of that team and feel responsible and take ownership in those types of success stories. Overall, Alpha, the value we contribute to our client is we really help bolster their argument for maximizing return on investment, making the most with what they've got, right? And we provide that professional expertise, that background, that third-party perspective to come in and really help augment what they're trying to do. Furthermore, I think something that's unique at Alpha, the value that we really contribute to our clients, is that we customize our projects to meet the client. If we know, there's no template that we follow, right? Um, and if we know that our client we're working with has a big important presentation board meeting and they're going to use the results from one of our facility condition assessments in that presentation, and that's three months after our project closes, our project managers, myself included, and the entire team, we are so invested in wanting that presentation to be a success that we keep it in mind and we touch base with our client. How are you doing? How's the material going? Do you need a refresher? How can we help you? It's after project close, but we really want to make sure they know that we are here for them and we're a part of their team. What are the different phases of a project life cycle? And, and what is really the benefit of engaging all the parties involved in a singular discussion? The singular discussion is, is really a, a culmination and an example of where you've reached success. On any topic with facilities asset management, if you have the board of directors and the facility management professionals and the community at large, if they all understand what's being discussed in terms of what the consequences are for a prioritization of funds or lack thereof, everybody knows what the consequences are, you are, you are then measuring some success. Hmm. But the life cycle actually involves, if you will, think of arrows kind of head to tail. Start with collecting information, it's often referred to as assessments, and then that feeds planning, and then planning typically feeds design steps, and then design leads into construction, construction leads into operations and maintenance, and then right back around to assessments. <coughs> In a facility asset management framework, all those arrows are connected, and at the middle is the information management and sharing amongst all stakeholders, such that everyone knows what the interconnectivity is between those segments of the life cycle management and all of their desired goals and objectives for performance hmm. in each of those segments. Now, a couple of times you have mentioned the community and stakeholders, which leads me to ask, who are your clients? Are you working in the corporate world, in the municipal world? Where are you? Our clients cover the, the gamut. Public, private, uh, governmental and the public for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, publicly traded companies, uh, but also privately held organizations. But who are the clients? People do business with people. That's a, that's a, that's a great thing, because <laughs> that's what, what we love is working with the folks. But the 
the, the people that really make the decisions about the purse strings, mm -hmm. those are our clients. When the CFOs or the CEOs or the board of directors that has a, a financial you know, interest and expertise will ask the right questions, or at least inquire to ask the right questions, then those, those chief leaders of organizations will seek out the answers and that's where we can step in and help. Now we also have long-standing relationships with the facility management professionals, the on-staff architects, engineers, uh, facilities directors, and they have a tough job to, to keep doing what they can do with what limited resources they have. Mm -hmm. So that's another entree where we help them, you know, elevate their cause for what it takes to actually maintain and operate those facilities and get a, a better ear from their leadership. Sure. Now, it seems like a basic question, but going back to the beginning, why does planning matter? Well, as anything in life, you know, if you, <laughs> if you don't have some plan, you may not, don't be surprised with where you wind up. <laughs> <laughs> right. So the planning and facility asset management is key, but also, as is with any plan, you don't want it so rigid that you don't have flexibility. Mm -hmm. So plans that are flexible, but most important, that you have a consistent method of measuring your track towards the desired objective of your facility performance. Hmm. Facility owners and managers benefit most when they have the ability to set standards, concisely report on the condition of their facilities, are they functionally adequate for what they're intending to serve, and then have the ability to document the financial requirements to maintain those standards, and then ultimately have a means of measuring their progress and communicating the results. For the past several years, with the economy's downturn, building owners and facility managers have had to work smarter with fewer people resources and fewer financial resources. That makes the need for facility asset management even greater than it ever has been. Most of our clients have lots of assets that are of significant value uh, that are not building related. Uh, those assets might be parking areas or utilities and a lot of our clients are municipalities or schools and they have sports facilities. So those things also need to have the same kind of principles of facility asset management applied to them. Our goal is to uh, be the trusted agent uh, for our clients, someone who can be relied upon so that they can uh, focus on the things that are important, uh, they understand their facility portfolio, and can focus on identifying what the sustainment and capital renewal needs are for their facilities. Facility managers generally understand those factors of, of their buildings that affect their bottom line or their business processes, but oftentimes they don't think about those systems that are buried in the walls, the floors, and the closets, and on the roof that really are just back there unseen and performing as they're intended to do. Uh, we got to always remember that the systems, all systems, whether they're buried in the walls or the floors, have a life cycle. And we're talking about things like electrical wiring and plumbing piping and things like that. An asset management program really brings together departments within an organization. Sometimes there's groups that have never really worked together or talked with each other. So groups that are focused on capital planning versus the folks that are worried about daily maintenance and operations, they usually have separate initiatives, separate budgets, but with an asset management program, you bring these two groups together and collectively they can interact with the community to accomplish great things. John, what is a system life cycle and why is it important to ascertain a professional assessment of building systems? Great question, Jackie. Uh, a system will go down to the component level. A system is nothing more than an aggregation of components. So a lighting system has light bulbs, it's got light fixtures, it's got wires, it's got switches, it's got circuit breakers, it's got circuit breaker panels, it's got transformers. All those pieces together constitute a system and any subcomponents within that may be a subsystem. Each piece in that, that system has an expected useful life. Mm -hmm. And the same goes for air conditioning systems and the impact that those uh, systems have on things like indoor air quality or life ha health safety considerations, they all change with the age of the system. And there's enough data now from manufacturers and from environmental uh, studies that you can start to link. We can link those levels of performance and expected deterioration over time with modeling to help clients understand where they'll be when 
in a life cycle and then by doing the professional assessment <clears throat> to go and figure out where a system or group of systems are at their current life cycle, mm -hmm. then be able to say, here's what you can expect to either achieve you know, the full life expectancy of your system or you're going to run short because of lack of funds due to maintenance or you just didn't have you know, the proper system maybe in place to last the 50 years that you wanted it to or 20 or 10 or whatever the, the clients had in place. And they may then say, well, what should we put in a new facility? And that's, that's another discussion. But that's another sign of success because they're asking the question. It's interesting to me that facilities asset management is a relatively new field because when you tell me all of these things that you're able to ascertain, it makes me think, how have they gotten away without having this service to begin with? How dreadful are some of the results that happen in the construction world? Well, a lot of it has to do with the initial cost of building a facility. You know, there's tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of dollars that can go into the design and construction of facilities. Mm -hmm. And that gets a lot of attention. Right. And it rightly should. Right. But at, at the end of the day, from a very big picture perspective, that's still 20% of the total cost of that facility over time. And that additional 80% doesn't hap happen in, you know, huge chunks. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen in $100 million chunks, typically. Mm -hmm it happens over time so that one or two percent cut on maintenance budgets can shorten the life cycle of key systems, heating, ventilation, air conditioning, electrical systems. It can start to shorten those life cycles and precipitate you know, poor performance that folks don't like, including you know, leaky roofs or you know, a bit of a musty smell coming from the, the right. heating and ventilation sure. system. So they're, they're, they're slow to build, so that's why you don't hear much about it and the folks in the facility management world deal with that daily. Hmm. Uh, my role is uh, as Director of Information Technology and I am specifically responsible for the infrastructure of the company. Uh, that's providing the uh, hardware, uh, automation support and that type of thing for our clients as well as our, uh, our, the company as well. We are the uh, facility doctors. We go out and we assess uh, facilities give our clients an idea as to you know, the shape of their, or the condition of their facilities and then provide them a prognosis as to the best ways of managing those facilities. That includes providing them information before the facilities are even built as well as providing them information as to uh, their existing footprint. One of the ways that I have value to our clients is the ability to provide them access to all of the information that we go out and collect for them. That includes uh, photos, uh, files, any kind of data or information that we cannot provide through the software that we uh, provide to our clients. We put on uh, SharePoint sites, FTP sites, and it's not just the ability of being able to provide them access to it, but in an organized fashion so that they can access that uh, information and data efficiently and effectively so that they can move on to all of the other important things that they have to do as well. In the condition assessment, my job as engineer is to identify the uh, different systems in the building determine where they are with respect to their life cycle and optimize the performance of each system so that it can last as long as it's able to so then we're able to provide a greater return on the investment from a building standpoint back to the ownership and provide uh, the tenants with what they need in the building. Now when you can reduce the number of times that you have to replace a component in the building, then you can bring more money back to the bottom line for the ownership. And when you do that uh, on a large scale, that means big savings for the owners. Well, I have three roles in the company. The first role is software development. We will develop the software that the assessors use to gather and QC the data, put it into a database. We run the calculations, and then we provide the information to the client in a format that's best for them. We do system integration. While we do develop our own software, a lot of times the clients have their own software or they want to use a third party. So our job is to take whatever software they want to use, combine it with our software where appropriate, and develop an integrated solution to the client. The software allows the client to answer questions like, what is the current state of my portfolio? What happened since last year or last month and why? 
tell me what's going to happen in the future. You know, if I had what budget is required to reach a certain set of key performance metrics, or really a lot of times is they have a set budget and they're going to want to know what plan can I put in place to maximize the performance of my assets given that budget. What benefits do you think your clients have experienced as a result of your services with Alpha? Many. The, and it continues to unfold and it uh, amazes us that uh, we've seen clients be able to justify additional positions within their facilities groups. We've seen them be able to justify a greater piece of the budget pie when it comes to the, the budget annual budget discussions because they've got now the, the information that has a consistent and technical and business and functional approach to establishing the performance levels that they're at mm -hmm. relative to where the group at the budget table understands they want to be, right. they then have a very clear voice to help define additional dollars. So mm -hmm. we've seen clients uh, gain more at the budget table from tens of thousands of dollars to billions of dollars in their programs. Huh. John, what does a typical assessment project look like? Great question. I wish there was one simple answer, but really what it comes down to is the assessment project. Remember that life cycle of assessments and planning and design and construction, operations and assessments, mm -hmm. and that, that goes on and on and on. But the assessment piece of it is really, if you think of it as a wellness venture, and maybe you've been you know, doing a great job of facility fitness or you know, personal physical fitness, but it may be time to have that professional look at where you are fitness wise and if you're most interested in the physical aspects or the functional aspects of the facilities uh, and physical and functional can include energy it can include indoor air quality which is why we have a, you know a rock solid team of environmental scientists that that can plug into that as well mm -hmm. I lead a, a group of environmental professionals we, we specialize in indoor environmental issues but we also consider and, and help with outdoor or site environmental conditions. Um, we specialize largely in, in asbestos, mold, lead, indoor environmental air quality type of, uh, of situations. We consider our environmental role in facility asset management very carefully. Um, we recognize that, that environmental conditions in buildings significantly, can significantly contribute to the, the cost and the maintenance costs of, of facilities. Um, for example, if a building contains asbestos, it's probably going to need different maintenance procedures, higher maintenance costs, and can ultimately affect the, the, the asset value, the, the resale value of the property. The problem is the fear and the perception of these hazards that, that come about. Um, so understanding the mechanisms of, of, of the harm and, and how these materials affect us and, and actually cause us distress and, and damage is a very important aspect here. So helping people understand that condition and alleviate the fear is a big part of our role. And we have specialists in, in all those arenas. We have mold specialists and lead experts and, and people who've done uh, you know, countless asbestos inspections and, and remediation studies and plans um, that can come in and help, help a client um, not only alleviate fear, but reduce risk, liability, um, help with legal cases if they come up because now they have, they have real factual information that, that, can, that can stand the test. And, um, and we see that as a, as a big part of our role. Mm -hmm. Wow. How has the importance of continued education and R&D shaped your company culture? That, you've defined our one big piece of our company culture. Number one is our client, taking care of the client. But uh, a close second is taking care of our folks, taking care of the clients. Mm -hmm. So continuing education is paramount. It's paramount to the individual to keep sharp on what they want to, to generate, you know, additional personal knowledge gain on. Mm -hmm. It's also key that we give back to our higher education friends and our K-12 friends in the, the high school arenas of letting, you know, young up-and-comers know that there are professions within the technical disciplines of architecture, engineering, construction, and the life sciences, and law, and business, and facility asset management, because to have a true facility asset management functioning practice in any organization, it takes 
knowledge of those disciplines all working together. So we're doing research since Alpha started with higher education uh, entities to help define those new practices and standards and procedures. Hmm, sounds great. John, describe your project management approach and how you work to customize solutions to meet your clients' needs. Well, it's the goes back to listening. Mm -hmm. And the, the client's expectations are really what define the, the project management approach. So while there's great standards on every you know, project management book ever written, uh, we custom tailor our approach to the client's environment. We don't try to re-engineer or reinvent their, their business processes. We seek out to understand what their business is and how they see facilities fitting into their, their business models. And then we tailor the project leadership, the project uh, technical focus on just that. So to develop the right metrics, to develop the right uh, investment plans, to develop the right assessment plans that then lead to, if they can exercise any parts of those, mm -hmm. we'll get them down the path of, of where we've understood them that they'd like to get. Mm -hmm. So to sum it up, the value of facility asset management is what? Making your facilities work for you, even with limited resources, for the full life of the facility. You summed it up perfectly. Thank you, John, for this conversation. It's truly been enlightening, and thank you for sharing the solutions from Alpha Facilities. We appreciate it. Thank you very much, Jackie. Great being here. For 21st Century Business, I'm Jackie Bales. Thanks for watching.